Good morning, students. Today we will talk about the derivation of the beam element, and we will see that the beam element uh, will be set into a matrix form that's important in analyzing beam problems using the direct stiffness method. For the beam stiffness matrix, we will use the slope deflection method to derive the beam stiffness matrix. We will assume that the, uh, all, no shear deformation and we will consider only flexural deformation. We will assume that the straight line in the cross section before deflection will remain straight after deflection. We will assume also a linear elastic relationship for the material behavior. That means we are applying the Hooke's law which is sigma equal e epsilon. As you can see here, the well-known slope deflection equation which relates the moments with the rotation and deflection at the ends. So MAB, which a, a is the near point and B is the far point, equal to 4 EI over L, where EI is the flexural rigidity of the member and L is the length of the member, times theta A. Theta A is the rotation at the near end plus 2 EI over L theta B. Theta B is the rotation at the far end minus 6 EI over L squared delta AB. Delta AB is the rotation for the part of the beam considered. We will assume that counterclockwise direction is positive. So if MAB is a positive value, that means the direction of it is counterclockwise. And if delta gives a counterclockwise direction for the chord rotation, then we will assume that delta is positive. Otherwise, delta is negative. Now we will derive for mod 1 of the beam. There are, as you know, four modes to complete the stiffness matrix for the beams. For mod 1, in local coordinate systems, we see that at degree of freedom 1, there is a force F1 and displacement upward D1. Similarly, for degree of freedom 2, we see that there is a force, which is now moments. We mean force is a general term. It's for force or moment. But force means here moment. F2 counterclockwise and the rotation D2 counterclockwise, and so on and so forth. For mod 1, we will apply a unit displacement in deg for degree of freedom 1. The forces that will form due to this deformation is K11. K11 means the force at degree of freedom 1 is due to a unit displacement at degree of freedom 1. K21 is the force at degree of freedom 2 due to a unit displacement at degree of freedom 1. K31 is the force at degree of freedom 3 due to a unit displacement at degree of freedom 1. K force K41 is the force at degree of freedom 4 due to unit displacement at degree of freedom 1. Due to this unit displacement, we will use the chord, uh, we will use the slope deflection derivation to find the mod 1 stiffness method. So we will apply equ the e equation for the slope deflection MAB for, for K2, to find K21 and K41. So we will find K21 as we can see, the, uh, the rotations theta A and theta B is zero, are zero, and delta is negative because the chord rotation is a clockwise. If we put a straight line between the two end points, and we will see that the rotation is a clockwise for the chord rotation, therefore delta is negative. So MAB, which is K 
uh, 2,1 equal to 6 EI over L square. And if we use the same equation for K41, we will find out that the K41, which is the moment at uh, 4 degree of freedom 4 equal to 6 EI over L square. And we can find K11, K31 from equilibrium equation by summing the moments at the far end equal to zero, K11 is at 12 EI over LQ. Using the other equation, summation FY equal to zero, we will find out that K41 is the negative sign of K11, therefore, uh, sorry, K31 equal to minus 12 EI over LQ. So for, this, for the first mode, which, which represent the first column in the uh, beam stiffness matrix, here it is, 12 EI over L cube, 6 EI over L square, minus 12 EI over L cube, 6 EI over L square. Now we will derive the second mode stiffness coefficients. So for the previous case, we are imposed a unit displacement at degree of freedom one. Now we will impose a unit rotation at degree of freedom two. So the, as you, you see here, the, the numbering sequence for the force forces of the beam element, K112 now is the force as degree of freedom one due to a unit rotation at degree of freedom two. K22 is the force at degree of freedom two uh, due to um, a unit rotation at degree of freedom two, and so on and so forth. Using the slope deflection equation, we will find out that K22 equal 4 EI over L because now we have a rotation at the near end which is A in the slope deflection equation if we return to it. So 4 EI over L theta A is 1 because it's counterclockwise. That means it's a positive, it has a positive sign. Theta B is 0. We don't have a delta. So um, AB, which is now K22 equal 4 EI over L. We can apply the slope deflection equation again. So now theta is 0, theta B is 1, which is the imposed unit rotation at the near end. So now MAB, which is now K2, K42, is equal to 2 EI over L. Delta AB is 0. Now we can use the equilibrium equation by summing moments about the far end. We, c we will find out that K12 equals 6 EI over L squared. We can use the other equation, summation of Y equals 0. We will find that K32 is the opposite sign of K12. Therefore, K32 is, minus, is equal to minus 6 EI over L square. We can do the same for mod 3 and mod 4, but we will find the coefficients for mod 3 from mod number 1. We will impose a unit displacement in the y direction at degree of freedom 3. We will find out that the co these coefficients for mod 3 is the opposite sign of mod 1. So 12 EI over L cube, now it's minus 12 EI over L cube. And so on and so forth for the other coefficients. Similarly, for mod number 4, we will impose a unit rotation at, degree of, at the far end or at degree of freedom 4. We will find out that the same sign for mod 4 as compared with mod Two. But since we have applied imposed a unit rotation at the far end and using the slope deflection equation, only there is a switching for the moments. So in mod 2, there is, it was 4 EI over L, now 2 EI over L. And, and for, similarly for degree of freedom 4, it was 2EI over L, now 4EI over L. This has happened because the far end now is the near end and the near end is the far end as compared with mode number 2. 
Here it is, the beam element summary. We have the, the beam stiffness matrix. As we can see here, it's relate the local forces with the local displacements. And uh, we can see also the symmetry of the matrix about the diagonal and it's four by four matrix. The stiffness coefficients can be defined by as for example for mode number one is the stiffness coefficients equal to the forces equal to the forces by imposing a unit displacement at degree of freedom one and hold the other degree of freedoms at zero as shown here. So F11, F1 equal K11. That means K11 is the force due to a unit displacement at degree of freedom one and imp imposing all other at zero. This is for mod one. We can do the same for mod two by imp imposing a unit displacement at degree of freedom two and hold all the other as zero. We will see that the, the coefficients, stiffness coefficient are the forces. Now we will use another uh, approach to derive the stiffness coefficients. The same assumptions that used previously are used here. The second uh, approach is called the direct integration of the government differential equation. So from uh, simple beam theory, we know that the fourth derivative of the deflection equation with respect to the x direction equal to the load divided by the reflectural rigidity. Since the load is zero, because now we are dealing with a beam element with loads only at the ends, so the uniformly distributed load is zero, and to find the deflection from this differential equation, we will integrate four times. So integrating four times we will give us the deflected shape equal to C1 x cube over 6, C2 x square over 2, C3 x plus C4. The slope is C1 x square over 2, C2 x plus C3. For mod 1, as we know before, we will impose a unit displacement upward at degree of freedom 1. So we have now the deflected shape with the forces. We can easily find the boundary conditions. So the deflection, when x equals 0, it's 1, which is represent the imposed unit displacement. The slope is 0. S similarly, at y, x equals L, the deflection is 0 and the slope is 0. We will apply this boundary condition using the equation for the deflection, we can get the deflected shape as shown in this, in this equation. From simple beam theory also, we know that the moment and the shear are given by, by these two equations. For the moment, equ the equal to EI d squared by dx squared, we will derive the deflected shape we got here two times and substitute it into this equation, we will get the moment defined using this formula. Similarly for the shear, but we have one thing here, the, uh, the moment and shear given using this equation has a sign have a sign convention represented by this figure, which is different than the assumed sign convention for the direct stiffness method. So we need to take care here. We, now we have the equation for the moment of shear which is required uh, for to derive the beam stiffness matrix. So for the moment at x equals 0, we find out the moment is minus 6 ei over l squared. The minus sign means that The, the direction for of the moment is a counterclockwise, which is mean that it's positive using our convention 
for the direct stiffness method. Similarly, for the shear, we find out the shear at x equals 0 equal to 12 vi over L cube. That means it's upward. That means it's a positive shear using the sign convention for the direct stiffness method. The moment at x equal L equal to 6 vi over L square means that due to the simple beam sign convention, it's a clockwise direction, right? So we need to uh, sorry, it's a counterclockwise, that means it's positive. For the shear at x equal L, it has a positive sign, that means it's a downward direction, therefore it's negative for the direct stiffness method sign convention. As we can see here, K31 is minus 12 Ei over L cube. We can do the same for mode 2. The difference only is the boundary conditions. Thank you for listening and hope you enjoy the lecture. I am Dr. Mustafa Kamal Mahmoud, a faculty member at the Civil Engineering Department at Nahrain University.